Over 200 journalists, media professionals and UN officials gathered at the two-day conference on improving public awareness of climate change issues in Africa, held on November 29th through the 30th in Nairobi, where Ian Rector, program manager of UNDP's African Adaptation Project, briefed attendees on the importance of Africa's adaptation in countering the effects of climate change. The conference took a regional approach to help expand public understanding and advocacy about climate change with South-South cooperation and within the framework of the African Adaptation Program. The African Adaptation Program is a strategic initiative and it's designed to assist the countries in the 20 countries uh, the 20 countries in strengthening their ability to identify, design and implement and monitor uh, long-term adaptation within the context of development. I was very encouraged that as we roll out this program that we have support and that is demand driven, it's not like uh, where you're pushing, the, sorry, where you're pushing the program. So this is for me what I was able to pick and we were able well, over the last two days to maintain the momentum. Climate change not only affects humans as with the AIDS pandemic, it also affects all forms of species in our world. Agriculture is Africa's most crucial sector. About 30% of Africa's GDP comes from its croplands, which contributes to about 50% of total export value. Moreover, 70% of Africa's population depends on agriculture for their livelihood. Some areas of Africa will become very serious drought areas, uh, and I'm talking about sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, for example, one of the uh, plant kingdoms of the world is the, the, the Western Cape. It has more species, plant species, than all of Europe. And that will be so severely affected that the, 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 the flora of that area will be destroyed. As ordinary citizens here in Nairobi and around the world have begun to see the dramatic changes in our climate, the media plays a crucial role in providing useful information to effectively guide public debate and understanding of climate change issues. The conference targeted the needs of African print and broadcast journalists in building skills, obtaining resources and training, as well as the need to build partnerships in order to increase capacity and to raise national awareness with local authorities, the urban and rural populations, and all other groups throughout Africa, so that information on climate change can and will reach all segments in a clear, simple and effective manner. Journalists are not the only means to communicate to the world, especially in Africa, where most of us or our people are in the rural areas. You need the other form of communication. And therefore, when they come to such meetings or understand such training programs, they may be able to develop a wider communication strategy that will take care of all the forms of media. I think media training in Africa for development has been underfunded because people have not realized how important it is. I think that, for instance, within our development programs and within our funding partnerships with the external uh, uh, development partners, we should be able to say, if we are thinking correctly, that mobilizing our people behind an idea is important. And the media are, are part of that mobilization process. It has to be st structured in, not an afterthought. It has to be built in, but built in with a good rationale, because if the public are not behind it, nothing will happen. Consensus was reached on the need for a national communication strategy for expanding public awareness and acceptance of the implications of climate change. Media experts noted the importance of synergies among government, media and civil society to reach local communities in Africa in providing practical climate change adaptation solutions at the grassroots level. Afaf Kanja, South South News, Nairobi.